Narwhal Frio is one of the most sophisticated robot vacuum and mop systems ever, and I've been living with it for over two months now. Today I'm going to review Frio, but I ran it through some pretty tough and sometimes downright crazy tests to see if that sophistication matched up with the real world. And there is nothing more sophisticated than putting a pile of this chocolate spread on the floor, coiling it up and then running a white vacuum over top of it to see how it goes. Bert says. As Narwhal ran over the chocolate, I panicked because not only did Narwhal sponsor this video, but my tests weren't starting out well. That's a recipe for chocolate disaster as a content creator. Now as it smeared the chocolate all over the vacuum, I learned that it wouldn't stop for smaller objects. Something I'll show you in a later test too. But what was amazing about this was that Narwhal recovered. I had to run Frio over top of this chocolate smear nine times, which wasn't so bad because you can actually set the device to run over a small area three times with the mop. So I actually only had to start it three times. I also figured out that I could turn up how wet the mop was and I also learned just how good it was at its self-cleaning feature. After that ninth pass, my floor was completely clean and that was one of the hardest substances to clean up. So it was happy days for me. However, I'm not letting Frio get away that easily. That's right, the tests get worse. Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and I'm here to save you time with home automation. And one of the easiest ways to do that is with a robot vacuum and mop combo unit. They can truly save you time when built right. Now just to clarify, sponsorships on Automate Your Life guarantee a company this spot on the channel. They help me pay my team and they help us to continue to do this, but they do not guarantee a positive review. Opinions are 100% my own. Your experience with any robot vacuum starts as you open the device. Narwhal's box is large and there are some accessories that go with the product. Here's everything you get. After I had everything out of the box, it was time to set up Narwhal. Now you start by plugging in Narwhal's base station and walking through prompts on the screen until it tells you to download the Narwhal Frio app. From there, the base station gets connected to your home's 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. You fill up the clean water tank and you put in the Narwhal brand cleaner. It smells fantastic, by the way, but you should know that the bottle is proprietary. You're gonna need to think about that as an ongoing cost. Having said that, I've barely used any of that cleaner in everything I've done, so it's not a big cost. But then the robot is ready to go and you start your journey by mapping your home. I sent it out to map and Frio did my whole main level in four minutes as it drove around in what seemed an almost haphazard way. It was using its onboard LiDAR and its other sensors as it drove around the rooms and completed a map. The way it was going around, I thought there was no chance that I would have an accurate map, but it came back perfect. It knew where my rugs were, my island, and many other objects. 
Now, side note, in case you don't know, LiDAR is generally accepted as the best navigation method for robot vacuums, and it's especially important for a combo unit like this. It's also relatively private because other models that try to keep up with the navigation that's possible with LiDAR tend to use cameras, which I really don't want in my home. Now from there, I ran a full vacuum and a full mopping of my home and I had let things go for a couple of weeks here and with a kid, that means there's a lot on the ground. In fact, I had left some larger objects, tons of crumbs and I didn't do any general pickup. So it got dirty. Now the initial run through took over two hours. I could watch the progress in the application and I only had to help Frio a single time. And that's because I had left my Christmas tree out and this thing's like a monster truck. It lifts itself up as it needs to, to get over things like my larger rug and to move when the going gets tough. So it literally lifted itself onto the legs of my smaller Christmas tree. And what's funny is it sat there and it took itself off the legs a number of times and went back on a number of times. It was trying to get behind the tree and there was no way for it to do that. This is actually a common thing for Narwhal because it's really determined to get everywhere. So I'd call it tenacious to a fault. The mopping was especially interesting to watch because not only did Frio lift up the mopping pads whenever it got onto a rug, but that rug felt dry. And that was even with my rug being a really thick one. I thought for sure it was gonna mess that up. And while there was a little water on the edge of my carpet, it wasn't enough to ever damage anything. Now Frio also mops the edges of your room really well as it kind of swings its booty over to the edge every couple of inches. It's careful as it goes along and make sure that it gets almost your entire floor fully covered with its rotating mops. The other thing that was so interesting was that every five to 10 minutes, Frio would just stop and go back to the base station to wash the mops. It would spend about two minutes and I checked the mops and they went from being really dirty to really clean every time. And one thing to note from that chocolate disaster I created was that if the mops needed it, they would be washed for longer periods of time. But after two hours of working its proverbial tail off, Narwhal managed to clean my entire home. It was perfect and I was seriously impressed. But you guys know me and I'm not gonna half-ass any tests. So I put the thing through its paces. I thought it best to conduct a simple path blocking test. So I took a box from a new sit-stand desk I was building and I put it across the hallway that connects the two areas of my main level. Then I told Frio to clean my kitchen and living room. This actually taught me a couple of things. Number one, you can split rooms in the Frio app, but it's a bit of a weird system and I hope they give us some new methods in the future because I couldn't actually split my kitchen really well from my living room with the line method that they were giving us. It's because lines can't cross the lines of any other room, so it became a bit awkward. And what was really funny about this test was that Narwhal started the clean but because it was blocked, it actually told me that it finished the task within a few minutes. When I reviewed the cleaning record for that run, it showed me that it just did this little segment, but the text notification I received said it had completed successfully. And that's a relatively unfair test because you're probably not gonna block an entire hallway. And as I told you before, Frio is really determined. It had actually pushed the box around quite a bit to try to get past it. And it does it gently because its sensors are really good when objects are over two to three inches tall. That LiDAR on top of Narwhal tells it where it is exactly in the home and it will nudge things to try to get around blockages. So I thought it was better to test some of the standard objects that you'll have lying around your home. So I brought out a screw, a Lego piece, a remote, and a few other toys and little things. 
for me, my kid is always throwing around pillows, so I threw one of those down too, and I have a lot of smart home products, so I put a smart humidifier and a flick button on the floor. Now, I'm sure all of that makes sense to you as a test for a robot vacuum, <laughs> but uh, here's the result of my home gauntlet. Narwhal ran right over the tiny screw and swallowed it instantly. Then it ran over the Lego, and although it took a few seconds to swallow that one up, it did. Don't tell the kid. Because the Fire TV remote was so low to the ground, Narwhal hit it and drug it around for a few moments until I grabbed it. It kept the flick button underneath it until I stopped the vacuum and pulled it out. It ran over Venom, a larger Lego minifigure, and nudged the pillow around to clean the area, but it 100% avoided the humidifier, which I was happy with because it was full of water. So if it is a really low object, this thing is just going over it. Usually an object was spat out, but I'm not a patient man, so I didn't wait always. If an obstacle is bigger, it just deals with it in what is the best way for that object. Doors, tables, chairs, and anything large and stationary is just avoided, but still cleaned around. The other part of my gauntlet test was around things like curtains or jackets left partially on the floor. Narwhal will avoid the curtains, and actually you should probably move them out of the way if you want to get in that area. But it's kind of neat that it doesn't end up pulling in things like curtains. It's also really great with cables, as it's the first robot vacuum that hasn't sucked up a cable and started to pull electronics off of tables. I started today's video with the chocolate test, because I'm here to shock and awe you. Uh, but I actually started the testing with about a half a cup of dry rice. I then set the area for cleaning and only chose to do vacuuming. In this test, I learned that Narwhal has a minimum spot cleaning area of about 10 square feet. But I also learned how careful of a device this is, as it went through the rice and picked up almost all of it on the first cleaning. It wasn't knocking the rice out of range very often, and that's because Frio's two front spinning sweepers go at different speeds, and they're intended to pull objects to just in front and in the middle of the vacuum to properly suck it up as it drives over. It's not perfect, and I don't think any robot vacuum could be 100% perfect with those spinners, but it did really well on this test as far as I'm concerned. What was less expected was what happened when I turned Narwhal over. You shouldn't have to do this, but part of the chocolate test was seeing how much chocolate I had smudged on the underside of the device. I had it all over those sweepers and I had it on all the components, but as I flipped it over, some of the rice came out, which made cleaning up the chocolate all the more exciting. And I had to send the device in and out of the base station so many times for the chocolate that it became wet and chocolatey inside of that station. It actually made it really hard for Frio to get in after it was done a task, and it failed a couple of times. But again, the determination and the tenacity of Frio was shocking to me, as it tried three times before it would give up. It even did the like fast backup move where you just gun your truck and don't look at what's behind you. It, it still failed a couple of times, but if you're not sending it in and out of the station in these crazy tests like I was with chocolate and rice on the ground, it's gonna be fine, because as soon as it got dry in the base station again, it went back to being perfect and has never failed since. One of the things that I noticed as I was dealing with my main floor was that the initial mapping hadn't been done with my bathroom door being opened. So I decided to open the door and see what happened. And what's nice about Frio is that you can select a room or an area as you go to clean, and then you can customize to pick one, two, or three times, and you can also adjust the vacuuming or mopping power. But sadly, what happened was Narwhal entered the new room, but didn't try to map it, and didn't recognize that it needed to do something about this new space that had been opened up. I hadn't set up a no-go zone or anything like that, which you can do in the app, but in the end, Narwhal entered for a moment and left. Which brings me to probably the biggest gap in Frio, because I took it upstairs 
and tried to run the vacuum on my second floor. The tenacity of Frio showed up again. It went around the space uh, about a hundred times to try to figure out where it was in its map, but it never could and eventually quit. It didn't vacuum, but it also didn't fall down the stairs. And this was especially amazing because as you're setting up Narwhal, they ask you if you have any stairs in your home and I told it, nope, just to see how bad that would go. But it was perfect. What wasn't perfect was that I couldn't map a second level. This is a pretty big gap for the cost. And what I'm glad to tell you is that it's only software based, but I would be remiss if I didn't tell you that you can only really do one floor today. The final test for me with any robot vacuum is whether or not I keep using it and whether or not it's saving me time. And the really special thing about Frio is that in a regular home without chocolate on the floor, you're going to have very little interaction with this device other than hearing it tell you it's done a task or hearing that it's completed its work. You have to fill the clean water tank and pour out the dirty water tank. You will have to lift the front lid and pull out the dust box every so often, although I haven't had to do that yet. You will eventually have to replace the sweepers and you will eventually have to replace the cleaner, the filters, the mops and more. But one of the great things is that you can see all of the maintenance you'll have to do and how many hours you have left before you have to do that. It even shows you how much is in the dust box and how many more hours of cleaning you have until that's full. And all of the timelines are really long. The one interesting thing to note about everything negative I've said about Narwhal is that it's not hardware based, it's all software based and that could be fixed over time. So, you know, feel free to ask me questions down in the comments below whether or not that's been fixed because I'm going to keep it. Otherwise, this is a device that's just going to go do its job. And as long as you're not looking to put this on two floors, and as long as you're not looking for absolute perfection when it comes to crazy messes like chocolate spread and rice, Frio really does free up your time. It's the first robot vacuum and mop system that I can recommend. And that's because it has saved me tons of work. And I can see that it's going to save me lots more going forward. That's worth the money to me. And although this won't fit everybody's budget today, this class of vacuum cleaner and mop combo is where we need the industry to go. We just maybe need the components to get cheaper over time. The links are below for Narwhal, but if you're wondering if this really is a great robot vacuum, then click on the playlist that's up on screen now. It'll showcase the last five models we had in our home, and you can judge for yourself. Otherwise, thanks for watching today, and of course, don't hate, automate. Oh.